Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, last night we managed to validate an entire array, 99 items, all using the exact same checker and be able to aggregate those results and verify if the entire data set is legit. In doing that, we found that one item at the very end had a name that was blank. We fixed it today. We're gonna use this opportunity to not only clean up data, but also clean up our integration test. You've climbed a mountain, you've done a lot of unit tests, you've gotten everything to extremely high coverage. Just because you're writing an integration test doesn't mean you can slack in writing pure functions, avoiding mutable state, and making sure that everything is clean and and dependable. What we're going to do tonight is use reduce to wrap some of our checks and pure functions and to make our unit test a lot more dependable using those predicate functions. So me being also the database administrator, I cleaned up that data. I found the actual restaurant in question that had a blank and I changed it to have cow for its name. So now that the data is actually in there, if we npm start and run our server, reload our data, scroll to the very bottom, you can now see that it has a name. We should, with good data, be able to rerun our integration test and it should work. So our unit tests are good, 25 passing. Let's do npm run integration. Verify our integration tests are good. Those are good, all errors zero, fantastic. The only issue, it's not really an issue, it's just gross. This isn't really good pure functions for all our predicates. We've created a lot of pure functions for predicates to have code that we can depend on. But when it comes to the actual integration test, this doesn't mean we can slack. This is code, even though it has the word integration test in it, it has a .js file, so you should treat it like any other code. And our integration test should be just like unit test or any other code and be pure functions that are dependable and good. But let's go ahead and change all the statefulness into a bunch of pure functions. We'll create two predicates that we'll use for now just in here. Check all restaurants. So we have a check restaurant, which is a checker for one restaurant. Let's check all restaurants and we'll get our restaurants in here. All errors. So we're gonna use array.reduce and it's gonna loop through just like our for loop is down below. But instead of the accumulator being a variable that we kind of keep track of here, we actually get it for us every single time in this callback function here for us. So like before, we'll get our current errors. We'll do our checker on check restaurant for the current restaurant that we got internally. If the current errors are in fact greater than zero in terms of length, that means somebody in there trigger the check restaurant. Go ahead and add that to the array here. Current errors. We're gonna go ahead and use the array spread syntax. If you're not familiar with this, this is effectively the same thing as going ACC push, current errors, add the array to the array, and then return to ACC. But that's two lines and it's a mutable state, right? It's affecting the array. What we're gonna do is create a brand new array, spread this guy out on the front, kind of like Spread in peanut butter. That's how I like to think of it. This guy, we're gonna take those errors and add them in there. So you can use push or you can use this syntax. I don't care, either one. Just trying to save you how much you wanna type and stay away from the immutable type. Otherwise, if there are no errors, go ahead and send that original ray, which is what? That's right, the third parameter. So in array at reduce, we put it here. In the old way, we put it here. And then we go ahead and add to it here. Here, you just add to it if it has anything. Otherwise, you return it back. Here, you don't do anything. It's just code showing up here because it's mutable state. Cool, so we now have a way to determine all the errors for the entire way we run this predicate on every single item. Now we're gonna return it. Now you can do this on one line, but I wanted to see what the reduce actually returns. We have check all restaurants, but I don't really care about counting errors. I'm not counting errors. I just wanna know, did it work or not? So let's create one last predicate called all restaurants are legit. We'll pass in our restaurants yet again. And we'll go ahead and get our errors from our new predicate, check restaurants. We'll pass in the restaurants that we got in there. And then we'll just say, look, all the errors that we got are zero. So that means it worked. Otherwise it didn't. You don't care about what's in there. You just wanna know if it worked or not. Let's go ahead and delete all of this craziness. And then we'll just say, check all restaurants are legit. Pass in our restaurants. Should be true. Now, when we rerun our integration test, they still all pass, but our code is a lot more readable. But more importantly though, we actually have some nice predicates that we can reuse against other unit tests. And these are pure functions. They don't have mutable state and they don't pollute our unit test and making them fugly. So that's how you use reduce in looping through all your predicates and using the array spread syntax. So again, my name is Jesse Warden. You got other questions, hit me up on the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see y'all tomorrow.